Welcome, everyone. Welcome to our next Galactic Ambassadors podcast, where we introduce our latest certified practitioners. And in today's podcast, we introduce Taylor Ann Norris, based in Hawaii, who is now certified as Galactic Astrology Soul Reader. And I'm excited about having this opportunity to learn about her background story she offers a variety of beautiful modalities. So I'm just so grateful that she's adding galactic astrology to her treasure box. Um, Taylor's website is taylornorrisreiki.com. So we'll learn more about that. Welcome, Taylor, and super well done on reaching this milestone. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful and happy to be here with you and everyone who's watching. Likewise, just yesterday, we had a full moon in Libra. And uh, I noticed you recorded beautiful guided Reiki healing meditation that incorporated galactic astrology, you brought in the fixed stars that were aligned with this full moon, the moon and the sun. And it just made my heart sing that we have something like that available. It was really beautifully done, t totally channeled. Uh, uplifting high vibrational guidance connection it was just amazing i shared it on my uh, social media and i look forward to your future creations really really beautifully done thank, thank you, you so much for sharing i'm so happy you enjoyed that and yeah that's every full moon i take my time to do that for myself and for whoever is guided to tune in and i've noticed the more I integrate the astrology with the Reiki and allow that to come through in the channeling. The healing that's possible is so profound, the guidance that's possible and the empowerment really, because we're having these star alignments and the moon is really highlighting that and giving us a chance to connect more with that. So I'm just happy to take advantage of it and to have this awareness to be able to to share in this way my yeah. soul is literally doing happy dance <laughs> describing all that i'm just so thrilled to see the many different kind of hybrid uh creations of just amazing modalities that come together and it's just such a beautiful manifestation of the age of aquarius where we are taking things to the next level and just going with the flow, following the excitement, the joy, and of course, then the the impact of it is is can be profound. So thank you for following your joy Absolutely. in such a beautiful way. So Taylor, we're curious about your spiritual journey. When did it start? How it led you to this point? Can you share a little bit about your upbringing or how, how you got to all this? Sure. Well, as a child, I was... I'm an only child, so spending a lot of time alone, a lot of time with animals, and I was naturally communicating with animals, communicating with elementals, feeling very connected to nature, feeling very connected to those beyond the veil, and also channeling, channeling stories coming from my dreams and from my guides. I had very active relationships with my guides and invisible friends and, you know, all of the classic trademarks of the, the psychic child. And this was all, you know, so lit up and so real for me. I had this really rich inner world. And slowly as time and conditioning and programming and you know i learned to be good i need to kind of shut that part down cover it up you know focus more on just the material world and you know being successful and achieving focusing on my studies and my sports and all of this so yeah i had the initiation experience of Pluto actually crossing my ascendant in high school and college. So this was a very profound time of dark night of the soul and confronting a lot of shadows, a lot of my unconscious and 
really having this kind of underworld type experience that, you know, led me to this rock bottom moment in my early 20s. You know, I really started climbing out of that step by step. And in 2012, you know, we had all these powerful alignments and it, it was this big year. And it was for me in this moment, I really decided this was my game changer. This was my turn around my lifestyle point. You know, I was, I, it felt like a lifestyle 180, really, that I was walking away from, you know, the partying kind of lifestyle drinking and drugs and really short-term pleasure and only focusing on material acquisition and material success and these kinds of things. You know, all the ways I kind of pushed down my authentic self, I decided it's time to change. It's really time to heal myself. And, you know, that's really when my healing journey began and my spiritual journey began and I was so fortunate and blessed because, you know, thanks to all my past lives as a yogi, when I was 15, I was taken to my first yoga class. So during that whole very difficult time, I had yoga as this way to support me, you know, as a healthy coping mechanism, as this way to really start dropping into my body more, dropping more into who I am. And it was really an anchor for me. So I continued with that. Um, in 2012 with my awakening, I, I went vegan. I studied Ayurveda. I, you know, began a lot of therapy and healing work, studying more of yoga, meditation, Ayurveda. I was studying psychology as an undergraduate. And then I studied psychology at the graduate level as well in a very, mainstream doctorate program. And it was really funny because I was there, you know, reading books on Carl Jung in my spare time and wanting to study, you know, that part of psychology more than just the mainstream work. And it was so funny because the classes like wouldn't even really talk about that. You know, he was just like mentioned and the same for in my neuroscience classes, like I, the chapters I was most excited about studying were the ones on consciousness. And the teacher, I remember like the first week said, oh, we're not going to cover that one because we don't really understand consciousness. And I was like, oh my God, this is not the right place for me. It was not the right place for me. And during that time, it was really interesting because my higher self showed me the future timeline. If you stay in this, if you finish your doctorate, if this is the path you walk, this is what it's going to look like. I did not like what I saw. It it was not for me. So I completely changed gears, took a leap of faith. And, you know, in my spare time in grad school, I was studying holistic health and nutrition and raw food and also you know, getting more of a a flavor for a new age spirituality, like this whole world opened up to me about crystals and metaphysics and auras and astral projections and all the different kinds of readings you can get and psychic fairs. And so, yeah, I really felt compelled to follow my guidance, follow what I was receiving in meditations as I was healing myself and um, so I moved to Hawaii at that point and started practicing holistic health as a coach to others and received a certification in that and received additional training in India as a yoga instructor. And it was so interesting during my Saturn return, the nodal reversal. So when the transiting north node of the moon is where the natal south node is and the transiting south node is where the natal north node is this is a moment we get bef right before our saturn return typically where it's like the past and the present and the future have all collapsed on one in one time so 
I, I was guided during that time to go to India and study at the ashrams. And I was like, I could just stay here <laughs> forever. <laughs> it's so nice. But again, that was not the guidance was like, no, you just needed to like learn this and remember this and take this back. This isn't a lifetime to hang out at the ashram the whole time. It's like, okay. And my next guidance was to go to uh, a Tibetan Buddhist abbey in Nova Scotia, Canada, Ani Pema Chodron's abbey. This was a fantastic experience. I took temporary monastic vows there, thought I was going to be a Buddhist nun. And it was so interesting. The cohort I joined was the year of the dragon. In this lineage, they work with the, the tiger, the snow lion, the Garuda, which is like a flying, like eagle type creature, and then the dragon. And it's, yeah, it's just so interesting um, that I was called to go back there and having all these past life memories come up of being a nun, being a monk, being a leader, being a part of that lineage. I received the guidance, you know, being there again, Taylor, you're just here to remember this part of your past, but not to stay your path, you know, you're, you're needed elsewhere. It's not to be at a, an abbey. You need to be out in the world helping in that way. You can still live like a monastic <laughs> if you want, but just out in the world. Shortly after I, you know, kind of cleared and culminated that path, I, I found Reiki or Reiki found me. And this was like just immediate soul resonance, complete resonance. Like I know this energy so deeply, so fully. It, it, it feels like home. It feels like love, like safety, like that connection I was really looking for. And it made my meditation practice like the most pleasurable thing ever. So I, I added that into my services along with holistic health coach, practicing Reiki and giving Reiki sessions. And the more Reiki sessions I was doing, the more my intuition was opening as well. Because I wanted to do as many Reiki sessions as I possibly could because I was so fascinated by the energy, by the healing, the results people were getting, but also like what was opening in me when I was working with people. And it got to the point where I was, you know, writing pages and pages in a session, in like a distant session of information for people. It's like, what is this? You know, how can I develop this more? So I've taken a lot more trainings and classes to keep developing that. You know, this, this question kept calling me of understand divine timing. Like, what is divine timing? What is what are these cycles, these larger cycles we're in? And what are all these natural and cosmic laws all about? And that's where Reiki led me to astrology. It was right around, I had an, a, a solar eclipse on my ascendant, which is marvelous. <laughs> right after that, it was the, the solstice and the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn, zero Aquarius. And that for me was like, okay, it's time to like dive into astrology deep. And I haven't stopped studying since then and practicing and you know, doing all the charts of family and friends and then doing all the charts of everyone I do Reiki on, wanting to share astrology with them. So I started combining that in with my Reiki, but not quite feeling confident to put it as a separate service just yet because I didn't have a certification. And that's where, you know, the divine alignment came through um, for me to find this course and receive this certification, feel fully confident aligned with offering the astrology separately. So I had heard your interview with Pam Gregory and felt, you know, very activated by it and like, whoa, this is a whole other dimension I need to check out. And I kept following your work after that. And I, I just kept waiting because I, ha I had a lot of other things going 
on again Gemini moon like if I if I say yes to every course I want to do it it would be way too much it's already borderline too much <laughs> so I was waiting 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 and and then for some reason I was looking at the royal stars I think some archangels and royal stars were coming in in my Reiki sessions and I found Ursula's videos on the royal stars and she was offering a discount for the course. And I was like, oh my gosh, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it now. Yeah, I I said yes. And so much magic has unfolded since I said yes. And this is just the most profound type of reading to do, the most profound type of, um, you know, really to drop into this multidimensional, no time, no space, all time, all space, like being in the records, being in the astrology and connecting soul to soul. And I'm able to bring in the Reiki to activate my intuition, but also to, you know, really ensure the highest information comes through and the highest healing for the person as well. So I have this intention with my sessions to you know, provide the healing and empowerment piece there. So, so amazing. I think my cheeks are starting to hurt <laughs> from the energy that you have. is like pure sunshine, like full on blast, sunny, gorgeous Leo energy, but with the mightiness of the eighth house there. So as you are speaking, as usual, I look at the galactic gastro alignments and my goodness, again, just yet another validation of, of what, what we are teaching and how it beautifully manifests in our lives. So I just want to highlight for the viewers, if it's okay for me to share some of your alignments. First of all, your ascendant is conjunct galactic center. So that, that frequency, it's so intriguing when you mentioned that you had your greatest transformations when either Pluto was transiting your ascendant or... Um, Saturn and whatever it was, the, where the other, but that is your activation uh, point and moment. And so having Celium in the eighth house, so your sun is in early Leo, eighth house, your south node is high Leo, eighth house, Mercury, and a second deacon medium <laughs> Leo, eighth house, your Mars, high Leo, eighth house, and your vertex is also eighth house. So it's just so fitting everything that you've experienced that you've mentioned and the fact that people can experience deep profound transformation when they come in contact and when they have a session with you because the eight house for the newbies to astrology is all about the deep profound transformation and uh, deep interest or passionate interest about everything that's hidden, all the esoteric stuff, all the metaphysical, deep psychology, people who have eight house planets uh, placements, they're into that kind of stuff. Um, but also, you know, with South Node in the eight house, the, the, the years, especially in the, you know, late teens, early 20s of, of the alcohol and the intensity of trying to fit in and looking for deep connect yeah it's all there and then kind of just bringing the blessings of the galactic alignments that you have there was like your saving grace uh, grace through through those challenging years um i've noticed you have a lot of sextiles to arcturus and i wonder if the arcturian energy was maybe one of the first once and i i associate reiki a lot with the arcturian energy because it's just that it feels like Christed consciousness. It feels like Buddhic uh, template. It feels very, you know, just divine love that's unconditional and profoundly healing. To me, Arcturus kind of uh, matches that frequency and you have a lot of um, sextile. So when there are sextile alignments for the viewers, it usually comes as a external blessings that come in from outside in to help us during uh important times and it's like you have spiritual protection no matter where you are no matter how far deep into the underworld you go you, you have that you know blessing the white dove above you um and i certainly felt like that i too have a south note in the eighth house so um, i can relate to that too oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah so, 
it's no, I, so- I do feel that it was like in in my darkest moments there was always light you know there was always something drawing me through and what's so interesting is once I got my Reiki attunements what I was guided to do was actually send Reiki back to all of those moments in my past so in a way it was me giving myself the past self you know, that light and that encouragement, you're channeling this Arcturian energy, channeling this Christ consciousness back to myself. And I always encourage my students to do that too, that, you know, whenever they finally do take a Reiki class to think about the the toughest moments in their life where you they can't imagine how they really got through, but they did. And I was like, send Reiki to those times. It was you. <laughs> Major goosebumps. I've yeah. never expressed this out loud, but I've experienced this realization. I, I, I swear, like I, I felt my future self in my past most difficult moments helping me. And it's something that you realize when you get to that point where you're actually consciously accessing that level of wisdom and consciousness, and you feel how there is sameness or likeness of that guidance actually being there for you in the past. It, it's hard to explain until you experience it but totally thank you so much for voicing that yeah the future self i've i've really been very interested in connecting with the future self as well and bringing that energy into the present and contacting her for her wisdom and what what i can know from my my highest most involved aspect and yeah it's it's funny, yeah, knowing in my present how much I've sent to the past. It's like I know my future self is just sending even stronger, more powerful healing to my present self. Like it keeps upgrading, you know, through this linear kind of looking at time. It's yeah, it's phenomenal. It's really phenomenal. I love that. That's your north note in Aquarius speaking, the you know, calling in the future into now. That's totally how we're going to live in just a very short amount of time i mean it's already here with us and it'll just keep on spreading as a consciousness that is just normal <laughs> to people yeah oh i love that i recall a group workshop i did okay. when i felt guided to to create a circle everyone was standing and then we consciously created energetic line towards the most appropriate version of your future self that has the tools and resources that you need in the now to move towards your highest potential it was really interesting stuff that was coming up so cool <laughs> well that's one of the things too i'm interested in looking at in the charts and in the readings is looking at the future lives as well and the indications of that and tuning into that so that the clients can have a little a hint or a clue about what that looks like and to start being in more conscious contact with that with that future self because you know we can look for clues in the chart and it's yeah it's so it's so helpful you know i love to, that you know what know. comes to mind is lisa royal holds galactic heritage cards if you have them she did such a wonderful job at expressing past present and future consciousness of various nations and i found that really helpful in comprehending the intention that, that you're saying there and then certainly every single star system has that past present and future consciousness so if you set the intention to connect to the highest timeline of your clients alignments Mm -hmm. then you will be drawing that into their into their session into their reading that's really awesome what a great idea for like a special niche focus and with your north node in aquarius it's just so fitting <laughs> that you're following that so, yeah, so i'm so grateful i found astrology because there is this deep need to be studying psychology still <laughs> But not in the way, you know, of like clinical psychology like I was, but to be looking at it through astrology, which is so Aquarian, which is, you know, archetypes and symbols and, you know, this universal cosmic language that really resonates so deeply and is not about pathologizing. It's, yeah, it reveals, you know, where the challenges, where our the things we're going to need to work through the tension created for the soul growth but it 
it gives so much more of a fuller and more complete picture, especially when integrated with the intuition and the soul records and the the deeper wisdom that comes through that non-linear. You're such a beautiful manifestation of ascendant conjuncting galactic center and then you have few other uh, galactic center and super galactic center alignments because that really is especially on the ascendant it's it just seems to be easier to tap into what i call quantum awareness where you are perceiving past present and future simultaneously and it all makes sense uh, you know people who don't necessarily have that particular alignment it they, they just don't operate that way until a transit comes when something like that opens up for them and then if you develop it you can nurture it and it, it can grow for anyone we can all learn it but for certain uh, individuals it really comes naturally and it's beautiful that you make it your sole mission to then bring the information through and with such a pure heart pure intention to bring healing and and advancement is just what a gift. Yeah, I mean, it was a challenging energy to work with. I don't want to sugarcoat it yeah, sure. <laughs> at all. At first, you know, unconsciously, you know, ascendant conjunct a massive black hole. I mean, this is not easy. But then it, it becomes this, you know, this void space, this connection to source, this connection to all that is, this connection to everything. But you know, at an unconscious level is so interesting. In my earlier years, I actually experienced the black hole like that. I experienced the void like that. And it was not a pleasant experience. But now, you know, after having a spiritual awakening and healing myself and being so committed to this healing work and the service, it's like every time I tune into that frequency, it just feels like you know, pure bliss, consciousness, stillness. It's wonderful. But the the contrast of that and realizing, wow, that my past self, when I tuned into that galactic center energy, it was terrifying. It was like existential void. But now it's like, no, all, you know, it completely is a different experience. So, you know, my heart goes out to the people with the with the galactic points that they're not always easy, but they can be transmuted and they can come through at such a, you know, as a gift, as a real gift and blessing. I do believe that all of our challenges, the things that might feel like burdens or like, oh, I'm too sensitive or I'm whatever it is, they really can all be transmuted into like our best, our tools, our treasures, our way of helping others being of service yeah absolutely really cool. absolutely i today was pondering about the importance of speaking to younger audience like students in college or even high school let them know about this stuff and let them have a look at their alignments and <laughs> warn them that if, if you are really wired galactically stay away from alcohol, stay away from drugs, stay away from taking alcohol and drugs in public spaces because it's it's mad. It, it's really dangerous uh, at the same time. But of course, we want to recognize divine guidance, divine timing, divine everything, like everything is perfect as is, but it would be nice to have something like that and inspiring the young ones to wake up earlier or access their gifts earlier. I don't know, just like, wondering. <laughs> I think with so many more conscious parents now and all the work that the older generations have done, it really does give a chance for these kids to stay in their remembering. And I think also with Pluto and Aquarius, people are going to be drawn, driven by this, you know, magnetic, irresistible Pluto, unconscious soul desire to, to check this stuff out, you know, to consider astrology, consider their galactic connections. I think this is only going to grow and grow and grow. Like to me, this feels like the beginning, like we are just on the verge of, you know, people starting to really resonate with this. I knew they already have been, but it's, you know, like the snowball effect. And I, I do believe the next, you know, 20 years of Pluto and Aquarius is it finally makes the transition fully people are you know going to be called like magnetized in unexplicable ways 
that to, feels so reassuring and, and i caught myself yeah. there in an old consciousness pattern thinking of you know wanting to protect or expecting them to make same mistakes but that's not the case we are moving collectively and they're they don't have to go through the same crazy stuff we had to go through and certainly the generations before us even way crazier stuff so checkpoint there <laughs> thanks for thanks for that yeah absolutely mm. well that's even come through i've done a lot of charts recently for people with the pluto uranus conjunction in virgo in the 60s and many of them you know had a later spiritual awakening or like oh why am i just you know finding this now and you know i feel like i should have heard about it when i was younger i was like no like thank you for all the work you did like you're making it possible for the younger and younger generations now to to be where we are and like be able to you know wake up earlier and earlier and stay awake and stay with this you know higher consciousness stay with this connection to the divine but it's so funny to see how you know the big transits totally bring people in like it's uncanny you know second saturn returns or you know saturn oppositions pluto oppositions it's it's amazing yeah. yesterday i was reflecting on my past and i was going through all the charts through through challenging points and i transiting my aldebaran alignment and and paris alignment that's where i had the biggest uh, transformations uh, jupiter is my big guy yeah uh, and of course all the others as well but not as much as as that when i have like biggest leaps towards completely different uh, realities so it'd be interesting for people to look back at their major milestones in their life and astrologically see where the planets are which houses they are in how they're aspect aspecting each other it's such a wonderful way of getting a deeper understanding of astrology and transits and how they influence us That's what I did in my training at Dwarf Planet University with Alan Clay. He had us look at the transits with the dwarf planet, so with these oh. Kuiper Belt objects, and that's where I I started looking at those. But then I was looking at like everything for the particular time periods, and it really does reveal so much depth about yeah how the transits work and how all of this. really plays out i highly highly recommend it to anyone it's also awesome yeah. uh is there in terms of your uh, galactic astrology sessions how do you offer them is it a written report in person can you talk a little bit about your style of delivery or service <laughs> Sure. Yeah, what I'm doing right now is a written report that's typically, you know, at least 15 pages or so written report and then I'm allowing an up to 2 hour Zoom video call. Because what I found is that sometimes people who are newer to astrology need more explanation of basics and I want to allow that time you know to not feel rushed and to really orient you to like what is going on <laughs> you know what are we doing here have kind of a teaching moment and be able to present the information in context so people can really you know integrate it fully so that's what i am offering right now is the written report and the the live call in case in case the discount is still there check check out i was offering 40% off the the session the qst session and so if that's there still definitely take advantage of it cuz it might not be there much longer i love that yeah really good is there anything else about your sessions or any intention for what kind of energy you're drawing in or there may already be a pattern that you recognize in terms of what types of people uh, you you do readings for well, one thing i will mention is that as soon as i found your work and learned about the galactic astrology in that time period i was in this process of channeling a lot of new healing techniques and one of the healing techniques that came through was this galactic ancestry reiki journey this multi-dimensional exchange of light and blessings and miracles and magic and this is a uh, a journey that i 
I channeled and I wrote it all down and I include in it all the possible constellation star alignment. So it's really reaching out to those ancestors, reaching out to those connections, descendants. I, I started working with it before taking the class and now taking the classes is something I include in my sessions for me to tune in on my end. And again, to really tap into that highest timeline, to tap into those lifetimes of mastery and to, to bring about the most healing and empowerment for the client at this time. So I'm using Reiki in my QSG sessions in that way. I'm, I'm looking at Oracle cards too, if I feel guided and as well as the astrology in depth. So it really is this holistic offering in that way. And for those who may have more past life trauma coming up, I do offer the Reiki sessions separately as well for deeper healing. I'm trained specifically in ancestral healing and past life healing, as well as many other aspects with Reiki. So I, I offer that as well. And I want to encourage too, if there's anybody who feels called to take a Reiki class or is maybe in the QSG course, wants to open their intuition, the number one thing that really started opening my intuition, well, Kundalini Yoga was a very good one, but Reiki, Reiki has opened my intuition to to new levels and open my my spirit to more remembering, you know, remembering who I am. So if someone's looking for a, you know, very soft, very gentle, very beautiful way of opening your intuition, um, I highly recommend a Reiki class and I do teach those online. So I want to offer that to this community as well. They're holy fire Reiki classes, world peace, Reiki energy. And it is, it's like a, a very Christ consciousness type of energy that's just so lovely. Yeah. I wholeheartedly agree. I witness my husband, Marek, when he does his Reiki for so many years and I, I can see exactly, I can testify. It, it's absolutely like that. Oh, such a gift. I'm so, so grateful that you are guided to um, come join our community and I will subscribe. Well, I already subscribe, but I will keep an eye out on your creations, your gifts, and really excited to hear the many new stories and just new ways of delivering just divine blessings to people who are ready to receive them, right? Absolutely. That's the key. You know, there just has to be that free will permission that that's all that's all that's needed. And I think more and more people are becoming ready. I've been very pleasantly surprised with how many people are ready for this. Yes. So, it's so exciting. Times. We have so much to look forward to. Just hang in there, everybody. <laughs> Stay high on your own supply. <laughs> Absolutely. Heaven on earth. Feel yeah. it within you. Let's create it externally. That's that's my mission. Well, thank you so much, Taylor, for shining your light so beautifully with so much courage and uh, uniqueness as you do. Is there any final message you have for our viewers before we close? Yeah, tune into the wisdom of your heart and your guidance and just keep following that still small voice within following your joy, following your bliss. And even if it doesn't make sense logically, if your heart is telling you you're ready, you know, be courageous. We're all being called to step up into more of who we truly are. And that's the only way heaven on earth, new earth is going to become more and more physical and more and more the mainstream reality for everyone, you know, it's all of us having courage. You know, with Pluto and Aquarius, don't forget about Leo. <laughs> Tune into your heart. <laughs> Such an amazing mantra made the heaven on earth become more mainstream available, more mainstream media as well. That's really good. I love that. <laughs> Powerful. My prayer. Much love, everyone. We'll see you again soon. Cheerio. Aloha.